The following video is intended for adult collectors and is not recommended for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Kato again with another third party Transformers review. Today I'm going to take a look at King Toys CT-01 Ferocious, their version of Rampage, which will eventually be their version of Predaking, or as my buddy Inu Tabi likes to say, Predaking. You get it? Yeah, you get it. We're going to start off by doing the intro, but after that I'm going to go right to accessories and do a quick overview of the character because the transformation is kind of a bear. Not going to be easy. I'm going to try to do as much of it as I can without having to do it off screen, but hopefully it'll help you if you get one. So, let's roll the intro, and if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting on? Hit that sub button, like the video, share it out there. Let's get going. It's Kato! Starting off with the accessory, you get his sword, which looks amazing. Nice orange, yellowish. I think it's coming across the right color on screen. Kind of ferocious looking, but I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be combined to a full weapon for Predaking. And the gun you get is amazing. This may be my favorite weapon of any Transformer that I've got. This dark gray here, Tampograph. Now the Tampograph throughout the whole thing reminds me a lot of Fans Hobby, but it looks really good. I love the colors on this. It will fold up like that, and it may even be Predaking's weapon because it extends out. And it doesn't really look that good extended out on him, on Rampage himself, but I think maybe it, it also could combine. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be a big combiner, I think. But I love the shade they used on this. It's got kind of a cherry color to it just a bit of a gloss over the yellow. And you get a nice collector's card. I did an unboxing video on the mail call, so if you didn't catch that, I, I'm not showing the box here, but I did show it in my unboxing. Uh, if you wanna check that out, I'll try to remember to pop a link up here to it. And the card is basically a thick card stock, not quite plastic. Last but not least, the instructions, ages 15 and up. They did a fantastic job producing the instructions. The artwork on here is great, but, but, and there is a but, the instructions themselves, oh yeah, I gotta show you the claw here, I'll do that too. Uh, the instructions themselves aren't, I mean, they, they tried. I know it's difficult to make instructions for people, especially in print, but there's a lot of 180, 90, and some, some 70 degrees, 150 degrees. It's just, it doesn't translate well into instructing. I love the design of this hand. This thing is going to be vicious looking. Those claws there, they're plastic. Little, I think that's die cast. And the interesting thing about this is once we get the other arm, this will combine to make a crab which I wonder if is a nod to Beast Wars Rampage. Was, was Beast Wars Rampage a crab? I can't remember. You'll let me know in the comments, I'm sure. But it looks just brutal. And I cannot wait to get this guy together. Who knows how long that's gonna take. And as I said, the weapons go in kind of a mixture of masterpiece style. There's a little tab there and a tab here. And it has a little half moon there so it just slides into that slot and then pegs in as well so it's almost like fans hobby with their little half moon slot but it also gives you a peg so it holds it just fine sword same way same thing just slides in there pegs in close the hand around it works really well now getting into the figure one thing that stands out is the color. The color 
is amazing. It looks like it's all touched with paint and I think the yellow is plastic, but it's like they gave it just enough of a top coat of this red to give it kind of a cherry look or a pearl look. And it looks awesome. The face sculpt looks very G1 with a little bit of style. One thing I don't like is the, it's hard to see here, but in person, that peg, it's a ball peg for the neck that gives you all this great movement, kind of sits up a little high, but you can see it. he's got some great light piping there. Um, I don't think I have enough backlighting to show that off well enough, but it is really good light piping and all that little detail the black in here the lighter yellow the eyes looks fantastic going down to the chest you've got of course the signature tiger head right there and i actually like to bring the ears out all the time like that these are plastic and be careful they are very sharp you get a good 360 of waist rotation and you can pop this up the combiner uh, elbow is in here you can pop that up and get some waist articulation I'm not going to do that because it's super tight but you can do it all the silver here arms will go up that far a lot of folks don't really like the way the arms are done on that weird joint there it kind of looks ugly I get that nice squeaky joints soft ratchet for 360 more tampograph yellow nice deep elbow bend kind of a double jointed elbow and tight bicep swivel which you do use for transformation the wrist will rotate each finger is articulated individually done really well nice and tight there and you can get some outward movement there on the wrist too so that's all really good i, I like that a lot i don't know how much of that outward movement I'll use but I'm glad it's there going down to the waist each one of these of the skirts come up and again you will use that for transformation to get everything out of the way and I've got the tail tucked away but you don't have to you can actually bring the tail down and have that as part of your robot mood if you like but this also this rear skirt right here will come up get that looks really good coming down to the legs again the paint is fantastic the tampographs are great i don't think they actually say anything i think it's nonsense but it does remind me a lot of fans hobby the legs will go out uh, all the way they rotate there at the upper thigh, up, back, just under 90 degrees of knee bend. Look at all this stuff. Man, it looks good. Uh, you can rotate the foot around on the ball joint. There's a lot of ball joints on this guy, and that comes in handy. Toes. I keep the rear claw out. It just helps with stability. But... Uh, some tight ankle tilt there a lot of tight joints on this guy a lot and that's pretty much it for articulation look at the back of him I mean it, it cleans up really well I don't one thing that's kind of standoffish for me is how lanky he is like the legs seem a little stretched and long but that's nitpicking I mean, it's just personal preference but Oh, man, super tight joints. But that's a look at him in his robot mode. There he is beside Generation Toys Red Bull. My latest Beast Bot acquisition. And wow, that is quite the size difference. And beside MP10. I don't think I realized how big this guy was going to be. Taller than MP10, this is going to be a mighty big combiner. Now let's try to get this guy transformed into his beast mode. And I'm gonna go step by step. Anything that's duplicated, like right arm, left arm, I'm only gonna show one of to try to speed this up because the legs take up some time. So we'll start off, stretch out 
of squeaky arms. And I do recommend getting a spudger because some of these things are really tight joints. So you want to make sure the knuckle, don't over tuck the knuckle. That's, that's, you don't want these to be up so high. So just kind of comfortably close them like so, and then keep the thumb at an angle there. And let's get this up. This is pretty typical. Raise that up, put that in there, close that up. Sometimes that can be a pain to get out. You can roll right here to try to get that back out later. And then close that up. You're gonna rotate 180. And to bring this down, you just want to bring it straight down like that. And it's kind of, there you go. As you push, you'll loosen this up and you want it to sit somewhere like that. And you'll be able to move that around in beast mode later to get that pose just how you want. But you just want it to sit like that and, oh, good, I'll unlock it like a dope. And straighten this up and you can push in just a tad there so that it looks something like that when you're done. Next up, you want to take the head and bring all this out on this little piece here. Open these up and then tuck the head. You can twist it around if you want. I don't know if it matters. Just drop the head back down in there and then it's going to tuck back in that just like so. The next part's a little bit annoying, but I'm glad you can see there's like a little half moon clip right here. That's gonna be important because there's a good chance this piece is gonna pop off of that clip because you have to bring this out on a hinge, you see? And you have just enough clearance. If you pull it out any further than that, it's gonna pop off. Easily fixable, but you can pop that off pretty quick. And you're going to push on the shoulder right here, kinda of out just a bit and down and you want to lower it so that the shoulder sits now level. Yeah, see, look, that's gonna pop off. It happens all the time. I'm glad that they made that possible, but whew, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But pop that in there. But you want to bring the shoulder all the way down until it pops in place there so you can see where it was and where it is. So now this whole piece is sitting a little lower. I hope I got that on camera. Come around to the back or to the side here. And what you want to do is these tabs right here will slot in right there. Do that first. Bring that up and close these in on those tabs like that. Keep your hand right here your thumb right here so that this doesn't pop up and you want to bring that straight like that. If you don't hold this down, it'll pop up and it'll create a weird angle. Then you're going to tab this together like so and you've got the head pretty much ready for beast mode. Now we'll start on the fun part, the legs. All right, so you'll start just by getting everything out of the way. Lift up all the skirts, make as much room as you can. Lift this up, lift the tail out of the way. And let's work on one leg at a time. All right, start, take this, loosen that up. And this right here, this whole joint right here is gonna be the cause of most of your confusion and headache and what will make it the most difficult for me to tell you how to do it. So mostly just watch and I'll try to explain it. So lift that up out of the way. You can, any way you want. You'll be moving that thing around a ton. Loosen this up. You're gonna loosen that up right here. And that basically gives you some freedom. You can pop that open there. So now you're ready to start moving stuff around. 
go ahead and extend all of that so that's out and ready now there are little tiny flaps right so when you go into into beast mode you want that closed and that close remember those because when you go into arm or robot mode you need to lower those back but it just fills in the gap there and allows you to move a little bit so now you want to swing on this hinge now this hinge has one two three four swivels on it and you want to swing this out so that it's on you hear how tight that is so that it's on the outside right but at the same time you want to swing this out of the way and then back outside so let's see if i can do that i'll shut up and see if i can get that done get that out and you can bring that down and i always have a hard time remembering which way to swivel this around but you essentially want to refill this gap that you just took everything out of back again. And I'm going to shut up and just start moving stuff. And I'll swing that. All right, so you see what I did there is I pivoted it all the way back around on this joint and that joint so it fills that gap back up. All I did was move from here to here and at the same time I rotated this around so that this piece stays on the outside. A lot of movement, but all necessary to get that animal leg on the outside. Now, you're gonna take this and try to fold it all the way up there so that this little piece goes into this gap like so and then just collapse everything down and until you get it all lined back up and you've basically got the animal leg ready so you can put the humanoid foot up bring that here and this piece is going to come around and cover up that top right there. So that's basically the animal leg done. There's more, but you'll see what I mean. Now, you're gonna want to, you got two hinges here. I'm not gonna overcomplicate it and tell you which hinge to move, but they're both ratcheted. What you wanna do is kinda Combiner Wars style up until it fits in. Once you have it in hand, it makes perfect sense. And then you can twist the animal leg down so that it's not upside down anymore. This piece you'll do something with later and I'll get there. Like so. Now you're ready to move on to the other side. Just close that down for now, but you will open that back up. You're just about at the point where you can start closing everything up. The tail, you're going to bring down, make sure that it's straight on there. And there's two little tabs here and here that are going to go right inside here. It's not that difficult. You just got to make sure that it's lined up and it, it won't close if it's wrong. So you'll have it. You'll know when you have it just like that. That's done and tab inside here like so and these kind of annoying pieces i like to tuck inside of here but this slot is going to tab over that and it's a really tight squeeze but it will work more annoying to do on camera than 
it might be worse, but there you go. Just like that. Same thing on this side. Wiggle everything around. And it's, again, I'm glad that they put everything on ball joints because it makes it a little easier just in case things go haywire. Just like that. Bring that foot back around. You can lower these to fill this gap. And the last step is to bring these side skirts and that tab will go in right there. Just like so. Same on this side. Just like so. Now I'll neaten this up and we got it. Now in his beast mode, he is amazing. And I am very likely gonna keep him in this mode until I get the full set and combine him. Wow, this thing is impressive. As you can tell, the gun will store right here on his back like so. But, and I gotta say, after a few times of transforming him, it gets a lot more intuitive. Look at that head, so amazing. Eyes in there, all that tampograph and stuff show up so well, that'll focus. The jaw is articulated and the head will move up and down. A little bit of back and forth and not much up, but I would imagine a beast this big doesn't really need to look up at much. And as you saw in transformation, you do get rotation at the shoulder. You have a double joint here so you can move around and the toes can articulate and pivot. So you can move out if you want on that tight joint. I mean, all the major articulation that you have in robot mode, you still get here. So you got movement there. You got this joint here, the toes, of course, rear heel. So the tail has lots of points of articulation. So if you want to bring that up and make that a weapon, you can. Looks so good. One of the most impressive bots I have purchased in a while die cast here on the, eh, what would that be, the latch? Lower back, I don't know. Underneath, it cleans up so well. For size comparison, he makes Red Bull look tiny. Look at this, that is ridiculous. And I'm still impressed by this, but that is massive. There he is with Magic Square's Light of Freedom, a masterpiece scale prime. And if that doesn't get the point across, I don't know what will. Now getting this guy into his arm mode is probably the most cumbersome just because again, there's more twisting around of the legs. But to start, just rotate. I bring this back around, fold the arms up on themselves. And you wanna get this tab inside here. And the only way to really do that, this is another one of those times where the instructions don't do it justice, but you need to get, all right, I'll show you. Take this, twist it halfway, and then bring it down and around again so that it's down here. And then you can tab that right inside there, like so. And you'll do the same thing on the other side. So rotate around. Bring that up like so. Bring the toe up halfway, straighten it, and then maneuver it around so that you can bring, it is very tight and you will probably feel like you shouldn't be doing that. And then tab that in there and that's done. 
Now you can go ahead and pull up on the abdomen so that you can free up that transformation joint. And here we go with this again. Wish me luck, but this may pop off. Loosen that up and swing it just so you have enough room to bring those shoulders back up to where they were. Up high. Really a pain to do on camera. And sure enough, I have no problem once I take it off camera, but you're just lifting these back up the opposite of what you did. And this didn't even pop off and closing that back up. Uh, you're going to loosen up the head. So untab right there. Go ahead and take those off. Now you're not bringing the head out. So you're just gonna bring the tighter head and rest it back down in this gap that you made here. If I can line it up, come on now, get up there. There we go, just like that. So that it sits inside that cavity. Then you're gonna close this back up as though the head were still in there. Just like so. Lift that up, twist that around on that ball joint and just let it rest right there. And the upper body is pretty much ready. Now this pain. Get these legs out of the way. Start loosening up these tabs here. Get these up and out of the way. Now you can split. Uh, pop these off. So these are loose again and able to be moved. Now you're ready to split the legs. We can get the tail up out of the way as well. Now, with this, don't extend the legs all the way, which is a mistake I made. Don't, don't transform the legs completely. All you're gonna do is bring them back on that one joint. So don't rotate them around. You're just re kind of relaxing them from that upper position, like so. So it should look something like that. Not all the way turned around because you want this piece to still be on the bottom. But, get this out of the way. You almost want to reverse what you did before, but not entirely. Go ahead and open this up. Now you've got to get this around here. So you can rotate the leg around like so. You want to keep this gap, this gap right here. So you're not going to fill this back in. And what I mean by that is you just need to get this to stay on the outside. Get this leg to come around. You know what? I want to do some other stuff first because I'm an idiot. I almost forgot a very important step and I'm not going to edit this because you need to see it. Open this up. Close these. You want to rotate these back in like they were. Now there is a peg. See this right here? You squeeze that in so there's just a few of those lines showing. It's about the best marker you can make. Thanks Epic for pointing that out. And there's a peg right here. You're going to bring that up like so. Now you're going to close, you're going to collapse and close that outside of that peg, but make sure that peg stays in that gap right there. That's going to be used to peg the leg to the thigh 
and then just close that back up and then you can tilt the leg tilt that foot up I actually twist that around and that peg that hole will peg right there and then twist the foot down now you're set to bring this up you can rotate this around to get this back out of the way here like that now you're going to bring this leg peg that right there like that i know that was more complicated than it needed to be my bad but that's what had to happen there you go like so uh, you will put this inside here because that hole is going to peg into that don't do that yet this you can twist around and it's just going to tab back like it did in robot mode right there to the thigh once everything gets all tight and in the right place okay this piece right here i'm going to bring out now just to show you be very careful with this because it's very tight it's going to peg inside here on both limbs be very careful because it's very tight and when you try to pull it back out from arm mode to robot mode i saw a little bit of stress on this but we'll tuck that away for now let me see if i can get this other leg any better than i did that one now if you duplicate that on the other side you'll end up with something like this this is where you will bring this tab out and tab it into both sides here i'm going to do that loosely a little loosely just because there's some more stuff we got to do just like so and like so all right so not going to put that in really tight yet because you're going to come around here i'm going to take these put these up here they just tab right along there and sit there all pretty you're going to take the tail and double it over so that it tabs here into here like that straighten that up bring the tail down and now these slots right here are going to go in right in here so that it all tabs together you can bring the legs together tab all that in right inside here and you will be done with that bring these down and tab those into this side and you'll end up with something like this which makes it all nice and tidy with the arm around bring claw in just like that bring that tail back down and snap that in place and you have the complete combiner arm again that will be the tab the slot that comes out here to lock into the shoulder very tight joints right here but you can see all the articulation you'll have with that. Do a quick comparison. Now, anyone that's been watching my videos lately know that I'm working on oversized Genbao Devastator. And wow, this guy is gonna be huge. Final thoughts on this guy are, well, I'm, I'm not torn. It's fantastic. It's nice size the paint looks good the articulation is great the accessories are beautiful and perfect the transformation is a bit of a bear as you saw but believe it or not 
it's far less complicated when you're not trying to do it behind the camera. So I did not do the transformation justice. Uh, the legs are kind of a pain, but it all works exactly how it should. The joints are a little tight. That's not a bad thing at all. That's what you heard with all that squeaking. But overall, I can't recommend the figure enough. It's a fun puzzle to figure out. The legs are fun once you get the hang of them. Again, doing it on camera is much different than having it in your lap right in front of you. It's not near as cumbersome as it seems on film. But it's tedious, and that's okay because the end result is pretty spot on and I can't wait for more. It's gonna be massive. And I'm really looking forward to Landable, which is their tantrum that's coming next. Guys, I appreciate you putting up with all this. I hope it helps if you get this figure. If nothing else, I hope my frustration was entertaining. And as always, be sure to check out the other Rejecticons in the links below. That's Sardinus by 82, Larkin's Lair, and Inutabi. Subscribe to all those guys. Subscribe to me if you haven't. I would really appreciate it. I've just crossed that 650 mark, and I'm hoping for 700 by June. And be on the lookout for more reviews, uh, interviews, and just all-around geek stuff from myself and the other Rejecticons. As always, guys, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other, and always play. This is Kato signing out. See you around like a donut. It's Kato.